All right, how's it going, everyone? I'm going to be doing another live refactoring. Um, someone sent me this trivia app. I think it's using React, and he's using, I think, Create React app. If I go ahead and look at the package, Jason, this is React Scripts. So nothing too too complex or complicated, and, but hopefully we can kind of look through the code and see if there's something that we can kind of improve. But like always, let's look through the app a little bit and see like what they have going. So the home page is a way to select categories. And then once you select the category, I'll just do like food and drink. You can select how many questions you want in the difficulty. And that's about it. So I'll select like five questions. I'll make them easy so I can maybe answer some right. I'll say start quiz. And notice that we're still on the same page, quiz page, food and drink. So I guess they have the, the category is in the React router URL. And we start getting some questions. So in what country would you expect to be served yogurt based starter called as Ziki? Uh, I have no idea. I'm going to do Greece. What is a popular name for little baked sausages wrapped in rashers of steaky bacon? Eggs in a blanket. What country is associated with drink whiskey? Uh, what is that? Scotland? Some chicken dish associated with part of the world. Uh, Cameroon bruschetta is what a cheese. All right, so three out of five. Um, I'm not good at trivia, obviously, and I don't know much about world culture in food and drinks, but this is the app. And when you click on go back to home, it looks like he redirects you back to the homepage. That's about it. So I don't expect to spend too much time refactoring much because there's not much to potentially refactor. Let's look at the index. This is usually the entry point of your app, and that is using strict mode and calling the app. So if we look at the app, he has two routes. He has the home page and then he has a category. One thing I'll say is typically for the URLs, we do lowercase. So I'll say quiz hyphen page would probably be a more suitable URL. Um, and then I just try to find wherever he's doing that and maybe update that. Let's see if there's other places I might need to refactor that as well. So that might be the only place. I'll just go ahead and make sure like I can redirect to the correct page when I do something like that. Okay. So keep that in mind. Typically URLs are, you know, lowercase with hyphens, I believe. But it really doesn't really doesn't really matter too much. So he has the nav bar. Let's look at that. See if there's anything special going on here. Doesn't seem like it. I'll just go ahead and save stuff. I have prettier setup and I have my indentations of two spaces. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save files as I see them. But he is mixing inline styles with class names. I would try to keep it consistent if you can. Like, there's no point to having an inline style here. You could probably just give it a class if the link accepts a class. So looking at the app CSS, I mean, like, I would probably give this a real name. I'll say like class name, nav, nav bar, link. How about that? And in fact, where is this nav bar even used? Is this for the trivia app thing? Let's just inspect this real quick and see like what's going on here. So he wraps the entire thing like this. Maybe this seems kind of, maybe this is okay. But like I was saying, like I would probably follow like BEM or some type of similar nomenclature if you wanted to do styles like this and usually with bm if you're going to use like class names it's um block element and then modifier so this would be nav bar nav bar link nav bar title nav bar icon like that and then in your css you want to keep it kind of consistent nav bar icon Was there anything else we missed? Uh, I should probably add the class of navbar title or actually navbar link because I believe he said text decoration. Decoration is, I think he had it as none or something. Let's do a diff real quick. I already forgotten like what he had it as. He has it as tech or dec text. He has it as text decoration of none. Um, which for some reason is not actually doing anything. So navbar link, let me make sure this is actually being applied here. 
And maybe that's the issue. Maybe it doesn't actually apply the navbar link. Text decoration. So, I mean, it might be also the navbar title has an underline on it. So anyway, I don't even know why he had that class. Like, I don't know if he wants it underlined or not. I think it would make more sense to not have it underlined. So let's go here and just say like none. Get rid of that navbar link. But yeah, read up on BIM. If you're going to do styles like this using class names, use BIM. Um, pretty straightforward. I mean, like you basically just... You do something like this. So you have buttons and then I'm trying to figure out, I, I forget the, the syntax of it. Block modifier of value. So let me go to the naming, hold on. I mean, typically with BIM, I think people do something like this. So the like nav bar under, underscore underscore title, nav bar underscore underscore icon. And then if you wanted to like change this to like red or something like that, you could have like a modifier here. Anyway, let's just focus on React. I'm not like I'm not a CSS expert. But yeah, there's nothing really uh too much about this nav bar. Let's go back to the app and let's go to the footer. So footer here, anything special? Nope. Just footer, signature, credits. Again, like I'd maybe use BIM for this. Like that, and just like style it like that. But anyway, let's just go back. So let's look at the app. We have this quiz page. This is like the main page and we have the home page. Let's go to the home page. This consists of a header and categories. I would probably, let's look at the header, head container. Yeah, now you're like uh, changing up style names. Like you're using camel case for styles. Typically people would be like head container and head uh, content or something like that. I know you guys are probably tired of me telling you like CSS stuff, but that's just my, my preferences. Okay. Now let's actually get to some real code we have some categories here. And if we look through these, what's going on? So first off, I I've done this in many other refactorings where if you have actual like Axios logic in your components, it's probably a better idea to abstract it out into a helper function. Just so your components aren't coupled to like the underlying implementation details of how you're fetching stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new folder called like proxies. And I'll call it like git categories. And he's using JavaScript, so I'll say JS and I'll say export const git categories is a function that's gonna call all this stuff. Go ahead and return it. So he is hitting this endpoint. And then he gets a response and then he catches it. So what we could probably do is just return response.data here. And the rest could just be gotten rid of. So now we have a function that we can call and we're not really making too much of an improvement other than we pulled out the, the URL. So now the component doesn't know about the URL that we're fetching data from because you could do it from local storage. You could do it from um, I don't know, Firebase or something, or you could do it from your own API. You don't want the components to be hard coded to where you're getting it from, like a trivia API, in case you wanted to have this running and fetch from somewhere else. So let's auto import that function, make sure it works. And now also we don't want this component to be like kind of coupled to the implementation of how fetch works. So anywhere you have data here, probably get rid of, but the rest, like we can go ahead and rename this to categories. Um, Make sure I don't have any uh, method overloading. So I'll say like return categories. And he sets the categories in state. And then he sets the loading to false. Has loading here true. And then he catches any errors. It's probably a good idea to actually like do something with the errors. So you could have like a state here that sets the error on state. And then you can show an error message if there was an issue. So another thing is um, in this day and age, like everyone just uses React Query for the most part. But I'm going to show you a, an approach that you can do to abstract this component away from having to know about doing all this stuff. So this is like, I'm gonna make a hook up here called like use categories. And I'm gonna put all that code here like so. And instead of having the component like have to know 
about how the component mounts and fetches the categories and stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and just return categories and is loading here. And we can just go ahead and say, go ahead and say like categories. I can't type right now. Categories and is loading equals use categories. So when you do that, you can actually like remove a lot of your code from your component itself. And now your component's more of just like a dumb presentational component if that's what you're shooting for. I kind of like this approach because now like you can just read the component. You don't care about if these categories were fetched when the component mounts, if these categories were stored in like a Zustan store or Redux, you don't care. The component doesn't care. All you care about is that I can get some categories back and I have a Boolean that tells me when it's loading or not. And typically what you'd also do is put like errors here. So if there's an error fetching the categories, you could also display that. But he's not really using anything with errors. So again, he's using like inline styles. Uh, if possible, I mean, like, I would just make a helper function called like text center. If you wanted to, if you like doing that, like kind of atomic a, a design or atomic CSS, so I'm going to say text center is a class and I'm going to say text align center. Okay, so now I can actually use that text center instead of having inline styles, which can kind of get out of hand and just become really messy. I'd rather have like a little helper function, especially if you're doing something simple like centering text or I don't know, grid systems and stuff like that. Um, let's see what else he's doing here. So then he, let, let's talk more about the use categories. So this looks fine. I think some people will actually probably put the fetch categories in the array here, the dependency array. Just because of how React is working, like if you had ESLint set up, set up, I bet you would complain and tell you that you need to have fetch categories here. But you can't put this here because this function is going to be recreated every single time. So you'd have to use some type of like use callback and do all this stuff, which I'm not a fan of all this. Like it's kind of a lot of overhead, but this is like technically the, the proper way to do it, I believe. I'm pretty sure if I had ESLint set up, it would complain. And let me not catch the error here. I'm going to go ahead and just not catch it so that we can, you know, let me just go ahead and do this. Errors, set errors like this. So typically you would probably have the catch here. You might have an error and then you could say set error is equal to error like this. Okay. So that allows your component to do something with the error. So yeah, again, we have like this abstracted away hook that kind of makes the component a little bit cleaner. I think you guys get the idea. This thing needs a dependency array of error. Use callback has a missing dependency error, either include it or remove the dependency array. Um, yeah, so actually it's not really, maybe I didn't need, need the use callback. It looks like Gary has ESLint set up. So I kind of just told you something wrong. Like maybe you don't need the pass fetch categories here and it'll just work. But I will put something there. Okay, now it's, now it's complaining for some reason. I don't know if my linter wasn't working, but yeah, you have to put this, but if you put this here, it's going to be an infinite loop. So you got to use a callback and then you're going to have to put like a, a dependency array. It's going to ask for error and welcome to react. Ladies and gentlemen, a simple thing became a bunch of extra boilerplate of dependency arrays and other stuff, but yeah, let's just make sure this works. I'm going to refresh the page and make sure we get our categories. Seems good. Is there anything else we can kind of clean up here? Okay, here's never use, never use the index for your key. If you have an actual like category ID, which I'm assuming there is one, like let me look at the network request here and I'm going to look at categories down here. And we get back a bunch of different categories. Food and drink, food and drink. Kind of weird. I'm not sure what this array is for. Um, the, uh, I would probably use the actual name, assuming that these are all unique enough to like be used. I would probably use the name, the category name as a key and not the index. Now, the reason you don't want to use the index for your key 
is because if you have some type of filtering logic going on or sorting logic, your index key is going to kind of get out of sync and React won't really know how to update it correctly because like you might have the same type of the same 10 categories with the same name, but when you sort them a different way, the indexes are going to get all shuffled and then React can't know how to compare the old components to the shuffle components and it gets kind of confused. So make sure the key is something that's actually like really unique to the category or the object that you're kind of looking at. Now, I don't know what category actually is here. I should probably console log what categories is. I'm hoping it's just like a, an array of strings. So let's go over here and look at this. It's actually an object. So he gets object.keys of category. So these would actually be strings. This is also why I recommend using TypeScript because right now I hover over this. I have no idea. Well, I guess this is a object.key, so it's smart enough to know that this is a string. So I would still just use TypeScript. Even if you're a beginner, like use TypeScript and use like the bare minimum you can just to like get that additional IntelliSense because it's very easy to forget something or mistype something and then you spend 30 minutes trying to debug the issue. So TypeScript, um, definitely useful. Uh, is there anything else here? Again, like you see here, e ERR, and this was error. This was a total mess up in my, like I messed this up, but I don't think TypeScript would have told me that and I should, probably should have done this. And I don't need the dependency right here. Let me also show you what happens if you don't put the use callback, okay? So this is gonna, be a lesson in why we have to put the use callback. In fact, we don't even need the the dependency array for fetch categories. I thought you did. Like the more I use React, the more I realize I'm a noob at React. Like I thought I would understand why, but I guess it's fine when this thing mounts just fetch the categories once. Sometimes like you have to put the actual, the, the methods that you're calling here, like you'd have to put them inside of here. I need to go read back up on like why and when that happens, but I you'll get ESLint errors all the time. Anyway, let's move on. I think this component looks pretty good. Let's look at the create card component. Um, again, he's using like an inline style. At this point he's had, he's used this like a couple places. I would say like text. Um, normal or whatever you want to call it and just say like text decoration is none. Actually, is it even called text decoration? It's been a while since I used like legit CSS. But yeah, I mean, just try to make utility classes. It makes, it'll make your, your code a little bit cleaner and easier to manage because you can just apply utility class wherever you want. And this was supposed to be for the category itself. So now there's no underline on these things. Let's make sure this works. I'm going to delete this real quick and save it. And now they're underlined. So all right. So that looks good, I think. If I click on a category now, let's actually go into like art and literature. And let's look at the quiz page. So once you've selected a category, it's going to go to the quiz page here and use params, use state, quiz, set quiz. So it looks like he elevated state for quiz so that these two components can like know about each other. I'm guessing this quiz component just doesn't render anything unless you actually selected a quiz. Um, but let's look at the settings card. I believe this is the settings card. And if you're a beginner, you can click on this components thing. If you have the, uh, the browser extension and you can actually hover over components and understand like what you're looking at. So see here, we have a settings card. It highlights it on the page. You can click it. You can see the state that's in the component. You can see the props that are passed down into it. So that kind of gives you a better way to understand and learn new applications as you're looking at them. But let's look at the settings card. And through here, I mean, it's a little bit more complex. Again, we have some Axios stuff here, which 
I'm probably gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna abstract this away again into a proxy. I'm gonna say get uh, what is this getting? Get questions. Js export const get questions, and this function is going to return that Axios call. We don't need to await on it, but we do need to return response data, and then probably don't catch the error and just let it bubble up. I will right, do this. And again, it's just abstracting your components away from the actual like logic for fetching stuff. Now this component, this, I'm sorry, this function needs some arguments. So I'll pass in category text, I'll pass in questions, and I'll pass in difficulty so that we can actually call this URL properly. Um, technically, like I would probably abstract this whole thing here to, I'll, say, I'll just say like export const base URL. And I'm gonna put that URL there. Probably don't need backticks. I don't know why I put backticks there. So I put the base URL, and what this allows you to do is now in all of your, your proxies, if you wanted to have this app running locally, you could do like process.env.base URL, or you could fall back on this trivia API. And what this allows you to do is I can go to my other proxy, my get categories. And I can go ahead and import that and use it here as well. There's also ways in Axios to like tell Axios to have a base URL so you don't have to like import this everywhere, but just do whatever works for you. So now you can import that base URL. Um, I mean, you can make another folder here called like config or index.js that has that, but honestly, I'm just gonna leave it here because why not? But going back to this, now we've abstracted away a function that we can get the questions for a category, right? Pretty cool. And we're gonna actually call it here. So get questions. We're gonna pass in the category text, the questions, and the difficulty. So one thing I wanna point out is you see how I did an object, like this thing takes in an object that has three properties on it. I always try to do this whenever, whenever there's more than like one argument. Because now I don't have to care about the order. I can put this in whatever order I want. And these are just basically named arguments and it doesn't care. It's going to be able to figure it out and destruct it over on this one and not, not complete, not, not crash. If I accidentally pass in like the wrong parameter in the wrong order, let's go ahead and auto import that. And we're going to go ahead and get the then like, so this could be like returned questions. And this is probably going to be returned questions. Get rid of that. Uh, probably don't need the catch. And again, what we could do if you're inclined to do so is we could make another hook called like const use questions and pull out the things that we need to abstract away. Which really, like, what does this thing care about? It cares about the questions. So this, this thing should return questions is loading. Probably an error as well. Like we should probably keep track of any errors that happen. We just set it equal to null, and here we can say set error is error, like so. And set quiz. So the quiz actually needs to be pulled in. So I'm gonna say set quiz is something that's pulled in, because I believe that was like a top level prop that was passed in. Um, category text, does that thing need to be pulled in? Category text, we should not pull in. Difficulty, we should not. And questions, probably should not be pulled in. So instead, I'm gonna say questions, category text, and difficulty. So all those things are gonna be passed into this custom little hook. And we're gonna actually just use it here. So I'm gonna say questions and is loading and error is equal to that function. And we can pass in the things that it needs, which is category text, difficulty, um, set quiz. Although I, maybe it sounds kind of strange to have this know about set quiz, but start quiz. In fact, I might change this up a little bit. I might just call this like fetch questions because there's actually like, we don't want this thing to just fetch the questions that we haven't defined all this stuff yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass back fetch, fetch questions 
which is going to do this call to get the questions from the backend API. And then when we get the questions, it's going to set the quiz here. That is loading to true. Wait, that should be loading false, right? And this should be is loading to true. Oh, wait, I'm getting confused. This thing, when you call it, it should set the loading to true, probably. And then it should fetch the question, set loading to false. This one should also set the loading to false down in the catch. And I don't think it makes sense to have this thing take in set quiz, to be honest. I think this thing should take in questions and set questions. And this could be a use state of an empty array for right now. And I'm going to go ahead and call set questions here. Return it. All right, so I don't know if I'm making this thing way over complicated. I probably am. But again, I'm trying to abstract the way like the loading state and stuff and have that all be kind of grouped together in a single hook. So it's a little bit manage more manageable. But these things, the category text and the difficulty, those things probably need to remain outside of that hook. And then when you actually call start quiz, like let's see what calls start quiz. So there's a button that says start quiz. There's two buttons that say start quiz. That's kind of confusing. I'm not sure why that's going on. If loading is false, we show this. Are these not identical? One is disabled. Okay, so one thing I'll show you is like, you can have props be dynamic. So instead of having two completely duplicated things, like if you notice that these, if I just get rid of the disabled, like I'm pretty sure these are almost duplicate, like identical. One has a class name, a start button, one doesn't. So what I would do is say disabled is equal to is loading. And then class name would be not is loading then it's going to be start button otherwise it's going to be nothing so now you don't have to do this ternary and like have the exact same code you have the actual properties themselves toggle different things right the props themselves can have dynamic content passed to them and then for start quiz like you don't need to pass questions and difficulty what we can actually do is just call fetch questions right so that's that callback here which in fact we could just do this when you click it fetches the questions and that is going to basically fetch the questions and then at some point those questions will be returned so here's the issue like we have to set the quiz at a higher level so I don't know if it makes sense to use a, an effect here. I really would rather not use an effect. But for right now, we could just try to do this. I'm going to say set quiz of questions. So whenever questions were to be defined, we're going to go ahead and just call start quiz. Don't know if that's the best approach. I think I'd rather have fetch questions actually taken some type of um, callback maybe. I'm kind of modeling this off of like React Query, and you guys can call me out in the comments if I'm just overly difficult, making this thing overly complex, which I probably am. Sometimes I do. Um, fetch questions would not have to take in questions or difficulty, because those would be passed into the hook themselves. But we could have this thing maybe. This is a promise, which is going to return some stuff. Okay, I don't know. Let's just keep it like this right now. It's probably not the best. And let's see if this thing is broken. Questions has already been declared. Oh, yeah. This thing shouldn't take in questions. This should take in a category text and a difficulty. Um, and then a set quiz doesn't, it doesn't need to take set quiz anymore. So when you call fetch questions, it's going to basically return, or it's going to set questions, and we're going to get that back. And then we can kind of listen for whenever the questions becomes defined. 
Go ahead and pass that quiz here. I think I'm overcomplicating this, I'll be honest. But we'll think about this in a second. Um, settings cards, set questions is not, the, not defined. Set questions, not defined. Okay, I'd probably name this a little bit better to like... Um, const number of questions, set number of questions equals use state of, I don't know what it was before, five or something. But okay, that makes sense. I need to pass that to the use questions hook. And that could be number of questions. And that could be passed in like this. All right. And then down here, that questions can call that. And I don't know what the default is. Uh, is default. I think it was five. So I'm going to go ahead and go up here and make that a string of five. Like so. And I'm going to put it to do. Refactor this maybe because it seems kind of hacky. Let's see if this works. I'm going to click start quiz. The quiz still works. I'm kind of actually surprised that worked. Um, okay, let's actually look at a couple more functions. I would put the effects close together if possible. So like maybe this should be, we should have two effects here. What is change category text doing? If you select the category of film and TV, change the category to film and TV. So this looks more of like a map. So maybe I would say like category map and then I would put a map here and just basically put some key value pairs so we can map these together instead of doing like this weird else if statement everywhere like just do this he's basically mapping the category from his UI to the category that's needed for the back end and in fact typically what we do Oh, I'll just keep doing this. I, th I think um, I think it's fine. I'll go ahead and go down here. Keep doing this. Uh, sports and leisure. And I'll call set category text, and I'll go ahead and just do the category that you have selected here. Okay, so assuming I got these all right, art and literature, food and drink, society and culture sports and leisure. I don't know why there's only like six of them or five of them because I thought we had a lot of categories on the main page. Uh, I'm guessing some of these don't work maybe. I don't know. Maybe it'd make more sense to actually like look into this. So again, like use a map. If you're just doing like a lookup value like this, you're converting one key to another key or one string to another string, string use a map. It just makes the code a little bit easier. But why is he doing this? So change category text. Whenever the category changes, which I'm guessing this should be a dependency right here, he's setting the category text. Category text is being sent to here. So that's like, it's needed to fetch from the back end. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's only the ones with the ambersands. That's why you had to do that. So if it's like a category of geography, then there's no need to map it because it'll still work. But food and drink, because it has the ambersand and spaces, he had to map it to underscores and. So if you actually think about the logic, if that's actually my assumption is correct, really what you just need to do is replace the ambersand with a underscore and underscore. I think that's exactly what he probably need to do. And then you don't have to like have all of this. I mean, he might want to say two lowercase as well, if that's what he's trying to go for. But let's try to get rid of the category map. Let's also get rid of this and just make this inline It'd be a little bit cleaner. And I think that does the exact same thing. So art and literature, I'm going to click start quiz, look at the network tab, and 
my UI is freezing right now. Oh, I'm doing a ton of requests. Uh, I have an infinite for loop. I have an infinite loop going somewhere. I don't know where. I kind of wonder where that's going on. If I click start quiz, it's working fine. I don't know what was going on before, but I thought I was like doing a ton of requests for some reason. Let me go back and just make sure that something's not broken. Okay, seems fine. So yeah, I mean, if you can really just take a, take a second to like read through the code and understand what's going on, this is all he needed to do. Just replace the ampersand with underscore and underscore to lowercase, and it still works the same way. But settings card category. And in fact, you don't even need a hook here. Like he could have just done this, put that directly here. It's a little bit, it's, it's cleaner because now you have one less use effect, I believe. But now, like, you don't have to have an effect. He doesn't even need state. Okay, yeah, okay. We're making this cleaner. Let's just go ahead and do this. He just needs to do this. Like so. Right? So he only has state of uh, the difficulty and the number of questions, because those are the two things we can change. The other one was like a derived, where the thing that's passed in here, he had it to just, like, do some logic to replace what was passed in. So that makes it a little bit cleaner too. I'm still not happy with this approach, but let's just look through the DOM real quick and like figure out the difficulty. That's pretty straightforward. Set number of questions. That's straightforward. And then a start quiz button. Yeah. I mean, did we start questions off as null? We didn't. So the way this use effect works is every time the questions changes, so like if we start off with the empty array and then we change it to an array that actually contains questions, this thing is going to fire off. So in fact, I don't think I need to put it in an if statement and then set quiz, I believe will always be defined. So I guess I wonder how many times this thing fires. I know we're using strict mode, so it might fire like twice. We are here, we are here. Yeah. Um, and just to kind of visualize that, you can return something that says like clean up. So that's a good thing to remember is like strict mode is going to call your your effect, it's gonna call the cleanup method and then it calls your effect again. Okay. And the moment we change to click start quiz, that's gonna set the quiz at a higher state. It cleans up the effect, it calls the effect. And then we get all the questions. So I think that's a little bit cleaner if we just do this. And in fact, if there's a way to do this, like, in fact, I, I would probably fetch questions. I don't know. I think it's fine. Do you all think this is fine? I think sometimes I wonder if fetch questions should actually take in, like, some type of, um, a, like, I don't know, call back, and then you can call the set quiz when you get the questions back. That kind of defeats the purpose of the custom hook and like the functional approach where you call this method and you get back some questions, you listen for that change, and then you can set the quiz. And then higher up, that'll set this quiz on this state, and then that will kind of re-render this whole component. This, this formatting is looking crazy here. Again, install the prettier. So like over here in your extensions, type in prettier and just install this extension like right here. Like everyone should be using this. You shouldn't like be writing code that looks the way it does right here. Like this just, that's not acceptable. So just save the file and it looks much cleaner and then delete whatever's not used. Current question, set current question. So that's kind of like this is the question card that's displaying the questions. And he's probably just incrementing this by one every time you go through it. 
Honestly, I don't see a benefit of having a subcomponent here. I would have just put this entire thing, like I would have moved this entire questions card out and put it in here. Like I don't know what the the benefit of doing this is, but Okay, so this component, what is this component doing? It's a little bit more complex. He has an effect and the effect is basically listening for when the question changes. Which set current question, set current question, quiz of the current question. So when this increment, when this thing increments, question will change. This effect will fire. This effect will fire. And then this will set the choices. Um, incorrect answers, correct answer. Is the correct answer always the last one? Yeah, okay, so that's, obviously this logic is bad. You need to shuffle this array because right now you're putting the last answer and I just got eight out of eight just by clicking the last answer every time. So that's kind of bad. Oh, you do sort them, but you're not sorting them properly. The way React works is you have to sort them I'll say this, I'll say question, I'll do this. Um, I think you need to sort them here, like so. Okay, so now if I go back and like redo this quiz, and I can't just get them all right by pressing the last one because it actually sorted it correctly. So make sure you don't like set the choices in this setter, date setter and then sort them, like you have to make sure you do this correctly or your stuff will not get sorted. I also don't know why we have questions here. I don't think we need that. Can questions ever be undefined? Because quiz content should never display. Honestly, I would probably do this, like only display this is if quiz is set. Okay. And then you don't have to like do this weird effect stuff. Like I can just do that, I believe. Let me refresh the page and make sure this is working. Okay, I definitely broke something. Um, quiz, quiz, quiz content. Why can't I click this? Man, click. Okay, I can't click click it for some reason. Yeah, I guess I'm curious why question, which is being passed in, wouldn't be set. I'll add back that if statement. I think there's just something, like there's something that we shouldn't have to check that for. In fact, I would rather just do this. I would just return if there's no questions. It's usually a little bit cleaner to write your code that way. So you don't have like a bunch of nesting going on. Um, what's going on here? This is a lot of ternaries going on. Like something like this is a red flag to me where you have a ternary that's doing a ternary. Not, not intuitive to read that. Also, we have two Booleans here. What is this actually? trying to represent show score set show score so really this one should be like is game over is quiz over and set is quiz over i think that's more descriptive and then if the quiz is not over you show the question so i'm going to go ahead and make a derived here that says show questions is equal to question and the game is not over. Just to kind of get this stuff like less complicated, like if you can simplify your templates, it's better, in my opinion. If question and the quiz is not over. The quiz is over. You don't need to check true there because it's already going to be a Boolean. I think. Yeah, it should already be a Boolean, so you need to do a triple check to make sure. Yeah, I would probably not do this ternary if possible. Um, I don't know why there's an empty array here. This seems kind of weird. 
like I would probably just honestly this is how I would do it. I would say show questions and I would do this div like so. And then I would do is quiz over and show the scorecard. Is it better? I don't know, but we'll see if it actually works. So go ahead and start the quiz, answer some questions, and we show the scorecard. So it still works. It's just easier to read this. Like, is the quiz over? Okay, then show the scorecard. Do we show the questions? Yes or no. And then we show the, the area that we need. Again, you're using I here for the key. I would not use the I, use a choice. Hopefully that doesn't break anything. Seems like it's still working. It's fine to use the actual like string of the choice, assuming that you're not going to have the same question twice or the same answer twice. So this loops over all the choices. Question number plus one. So show the number question number, which is this. Show the title, or show the question, which is that. And then loop over all the choices. I don't know why this ampersand's here. Like, choices should be defined, I think. Yeah, it's an empty array. So if you know it's always going to be an empty array, there's no need to do that, like, check there. Just delete that, and that should still work. And then map over the choices, and then render out. And if you click on one, we are going to handle the question that was clicked. Handle answer, we get the choice that was selected. Instead of value, I'd probably name this like selected answer. If you can try to name Booleans better, like or name your variables more descriptive, it, your code would be a lot cleaner. Handle answer. I might even call this handle answer quick clicked. And handle answer clicked. Selected answer. If the answer you selected is the correct answer, set the score. I always use curly braces. Like, I would never make if statements without curly braces. This makes sense. Increment the score. And then number, if you still have more, if number, what is the number? If number is less than quiz length minus one. Has remaining questions equals let's do this sometimes it's good to do this if your code is not really apparent what's going on do that if has remaining questions set the current question by incrementing it by one else we know the game's over set quiz is over true set current question back to zero don't know why he has a callback there i think you could just use zero there um Quiz length. Quiz length. Um, current question, set current question, quiz. Again, like I would probably just, I think it made it more complex having this subcomponent here instead of just having all this logic just put here. I think it would have been a lot cleaner if you just Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe just passing quiz directly to the hero to make it cleaner. I don't really know. It just seems strange that we have like this component that just keeping track of the current question. But really all the logic for incrementing goes here. So I would actually take this out, put this here. That doesn't need to be passed in. And current question. The question could be gone too. I'll do question is gone. I'll say const question is equal to quiz, quiz of current question. Something like that. I probably just broke all this code, let's be honest. Number, set current question. So that one doesn't need to go in anymore. Number is current question, so that can go away. Quiz length we don't need anymore because like we know what the length is. So quiz length can go away and this could just be quiz dot length. 
numbers current question quiz length would be quiz dot length probably just broke everything let's be honest let's refresh the page start the quiz and does it still work it does so the the lesson there is like what are you gaining from having this like top level component? Honestly, I don't think there's much gained at all. And I would probably pull all of this stuff out and just put it right here. So you have one less component to worry about. And then this whole thing, I would just put it right here instead. Have this import scorecard. Use effect can be imported. All these different things could be imported. And now we can get rid of the question card because, like, it's not really, not really useful anymore. Does it still work? Yeah, still works. So again, like don't abstract components that there's really like if you're just passing something through to pass it through again you're not gaining too much by doing that if you're just trying to abstract it away so you can clean some of this stuff up uh, i mean like you could delete some extra divs that you have like you have divs inside of divs do that you have another div here a lot of divs going on like try to only add the divs you need And uh, yeah, I'm still not a fan of this if questions. I kind of wonder like, why do we have to do that? Where does question come from? Question comes from quiz of current question, which should hopefully be defined. I don't know why that wouldn't be defined. Um, if you were to console log this, does it ever print out undefined? It prints out undefined when you haven't selected one. So that means like, is quiz defined? Let me refresh this page. Quiz, quiz is an empty array. Um, So I think I'd actually do if quiz length is less than zero, or if a quiz length is greater than zero, then display the quiz content. And then I don't think you need to have this if statement here, and that'll clean that up just a little bit. I think this will work now. Yeah. Awesome. So just keep that in mind. Like, don't if the component is going to crash because it's trying to show stuff that it shouldn't even be showing, then just don't show it. Like in the parent component, you can hide it and conditionally show it when it's ready to be displayed. Or I could do the same thing, and I could probably... Yeah, I don't know. I think it's easier just to do it in the parent. Anyway, yeah, I think we refactored quite a bit of stuff. I think I made it cleaner. You, can guy, you guys can be the judge of that. You can tell me if I made stuff a little bit more complex or if I made it cleaner. Um, I think I covered all this stuff. So, I mean, I think this is a pretty cool project to look at. This could probably be cleaned up, but if score is equal to total. Yeah, if you can, avoid all these ternaries, attach the ternaries. Like, this is not clean. This is so hard to read. Um, like, just use derives, const, like, you could do const um, perfect is perfect score. Boom. And then I don't need to have that logic there. And then I could say, and if it was a perfect score, then just show that. The other one, if the score total is greater than, I'll say like const show great job is equal to not is perfect score. And you got better than 50%. So I could do this. A great job and this and then otherwise i could say if not show great job and this don't know if that makes it cleaner to me i think it's easier to read this code where did my h3 go
right? So reading through this, there's not a bunch of ternaries. You say, if it was a perfect score, show congrats, you got them all right. Show great job. Congrats, you did a great job. Or I could say show next time. This might be easy, more, this might make more sense if I did this. Show next time is equal to not great job. Did I maybe mess something up here? Probably did. But let's just try it out real quick, make sure I didn't break anything. I think this works and it's easier to read and then you can also test this logic directly like I could easily pull this out to a custom hook and then bring in react testing library and test my hook because this is the type of logic that you can easily screw up and it's hard to read and understand so like if you can test this with the unit test you'll be in a better position to uh, trust the code and then again class name would be text I don't know what it was, I forget. But anyway, if you enjoyed watching this video, give me a thumbs up. Also, feel free to join my Discord if you want to talk to me directly or ask me questions. Or if you want to get help and you're stuck with your coding uh, journey, there's a lot of people in my Discord who are willing to help you if you are stuck and have a question. So feel free to join. The link is in the description below. Otherwise, have a good day and happy coding.